All right, Julius Robert Mayer, SpongeBob. I, 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 I need to do a project on him, but I, I don't know how to do it. So, what do you think I should do? Well, obviously, boy, you have to use a time machine. You know, you gotta talk to him directly, interview him. How, you have a time machine? Hell yeah, I have a time machine. Who do you think I am? So I'm going, I'm gonna go back in time. We're gonna go back in time and go see him. All right, ready? Set, let's go. Where are we? We're in 1845. This is where Robert discovered more about photosynthesis and added more to his discoveries. All right, so he's inside the house. Yeah. So how do we get inside? Nah, I, I'll deal with that. FBI, open up! Robert was actually the first German psychogen and psychicist. He was the first to state the law of conservation of energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. He stated that the sun is the ultimate source of energy for both plants and animals. Hello? Yes? Uh, who's out there? Uh, yeah. My name is Amin and this guy is Spongebob. We would like to ask you a few questions on plants and energy. Yes, yes, that's all good. I will... Uh, please, come inside, come inside. Can you mind explaining us to what, what, what a plant does and stuff like that? Yes, yes, yes. So basically, uh, uh, the plants take in one form of power, light, and produce another power, chemical differentiation. And power is just another f form of energy. Man, this guy is mad boring. Shut the hell up, I mean. I'm doing this for you, bro. You gotta shut up with your sunburned albino, six degree burned looking boy. Yeah, you really enlightened the theory on photosynthesis. So, what else can you tell us? Well, plants do not only produce organic matter, but also provide the energy which sustains life. Yeah, so basically, you're saying like, plants like produce life for us. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I also studied the process of photosynthesis and, and, and what would that be? Well, it would be CO2 plus H20 plus light equals CO2 plus organic matter plus chemical energy. What the hell does that even mean? It means you better be writing this stuff down, son! So you basically fully established that the sun is the source of all energy on this planet. Yes, yes, that seems to be what I believe. Oh, thank you for your time. Oh, anytime, anytime. You can come by anytime. All right, SpongeBob, let's get going. So, what now? What, what do we do now? Well, we're going to have to go a little further back, you know. Robert also has a little inspiration to how he did this. What, inspiration? What do you mean? Like, how did, how did he get to that point? Yeah, exactly. We're going back in time again to 1840. All right. Okay, this is where he was about 26 years old. He became, he went back to Germany, he settled down at the town doctor, and it might seem like he was done with the adventure. But then, he was, he, you know, he was letting blood out from six sailors, you know, that, why, why would they do that? It had it, it been thought of a way to, like, get rid of diseases, you let the blood out. That's disgusting! You're disgusting! Shut the hell up! Believed to work, but we obviously know that's not true. So the fact of the matter is, you you lance it into a vein, and blood carries less oxygen from arterial blood. It runs darker. The first time he opened a vein in Dark Chita, blood ran far too red, and he thought he hit like an arteria. Then he found that normal in the tropics, and he realized people burn less of the food they eat; they generate less heat. So this is where he gets his like energy theory? Not exactly. Now we already know that food fuels our power output, but may, may I also realize that it fuels our heat. And he realized that he realized that the less people eat, the less heat they generate. So he learned the truth about energy conservation. So then that's when he decided that he should test it out on plants, you know, because plants were growing and he wanted to know where the energy was coming from. Alright, so what happened after that? Well, after he, he got his plants sorted out and, you know, whatever, he actually sent it in to, like, scientists and whatever, but they actually rejected the idea and ignored it. 
they rejected it. Well, who cares about plants back then, right? So it, the thing is, he was so angry that he actually committed suicide in 1850. Wow, that that's actually pretty bad. Well, I mean, now we know that that is actually true, but it, 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 he they didn't know better back then. Why did they ignore him anyway? Well, he he actually wasn't that good in writing papers. You see, he, he wrote like a second grader. He actually didn't know what he was doing. So he actually had to study for like two whole years to actually make even a decent paper. So he did. Well, he did, but it, it was better. He, he didn't even know math, but he eventually did wrote a clumsy paper, but the editor still ignored it. So eventually, when he honed his accuracy, he found a correct theory, and no one would believe it until his measurement was more complete. The, even when they over, even when they looked through the whole complete thing, they didn't seem to care. So he killed himself out of anger. Yeah, because they didn't care about what he had to say. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty tragic. Yeah, but it's all right. You got everything down in your paper? Yeah, I got it. I'm ready to just turn it in now. All right, let's 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 do this. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about this mayor and his tragic backstory. And we hope you learned something at least. Please give me an A.